So I want to draw this picture. Oops. So basically, here's re, and then here's co re, and then their intersection here is r. And I want to emphasize again that co re is not the complement of re. There is still a gulf, a giant gulf, of classes uh, that are that are not there. So here's like all. It's way way bigger. But this it, we're sorting, starting to build a landscape. Of, of, of problems. We're sort of starting to come up with a, a, a visual, we're sort of starting to visualize a whole zoo of classes. Uh, here's, and then, you know, we can put the ones we've, we've talked about here. So here's, here's H. We know that the halting problem's in re, you know, and then you can kind of pepper the places, you know, and it's not in R, and it's not in co-re, so it's, it's got to be here specifically, right? We're starting to kind of push thing, push problems into specific places. In fact, you can probably and probably should uh, you know, put H actually up here in the corner, right? Because we said it was like one of the hardest problems in Re. Uh, so it's, as, it's, it's, it's difficult as a problem in Re gets, so we should probably kind of put it on the border. Um, so here's another class. Uh, so we can start, we're starting to develop a hierarchy. So this is how I'll end the video. Um, this is the first layer of a hierarchy. Uh, the hierarchy works like this. So basically, uh, layer 0 is going to be, we're going to say that delta 0, 1, wait, I'm sorry, uh, delta 0, 0, I'm not going to put the 0, I'm just going to say delta 0. Uh, delta 0 is equal to uh, pi 0, is equal to sigma zero is equal to r. So uh, I know this looks like nonsense right now, but the bottom is like the bottom line is that we're going to kind of relabel r as like delta zero. Uh, don't even worry about these two. Just let's just say delta. So, so delta zero equals r, and that's the thing. Delta zero is going to be sort of the intersection versions. Okay, so I just wanted to make a little correction. Uh, this is I made a mistake. This is not delta zero. I always I always mess this up. Uh, delta, delta zero is something a little smaller. This is actually delta one. I should have said that. So yeah, sorry about that. Uh, layer one. I'm gonna say re is equal to sigma one, and co re. I'm gonna say is equal to pi one. And so how are we going to define sigma 2? So basically the idea is that the delta classes are the ones in the middle, the sigma classes are these guys, and the delta and the tie classes are these guys. And you can kind of think of the sigma classes, are they're, they're going to be associated with this their exists quantifier. And then these are going to be associated with the for all quantifier. So to define sigma 2, it'll be this. L will be in sigma 2. Uh, if, uh, if and only if, there is a machine M, and if you're, if this is confusing the crap out of you, do not worry. This is, uh, we're gonna, uh, we'll, we'll kind of return to it, but like the important three are just R, Co, Re, and Re. Uh, I don't really have to get into what I'm saying right now, but I, I, it will, it will be nice that I do it. If there's a machine M, oh, sorry, yeah. No, 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 let me not miss this machine. If there is uh, a computable uh, uh, problem uh, L, or sorry, not L, but like J, uh, such that um, uh, Y, I'll say Y is an L, if and only if uh, there exists a Y1 such that for all Y2, uh, it is the case that you have this triplet, y1, y2, uh, I'm sorry, I should have used x's. I'll say x here. So x is an L if and only if there exists a y1 and that such that for all y2, y1, y2, and x, this triplet is in j. In other words, we are now two degrees of separation removed from a computable problem. We have this computable problem right here, and we sort of have two degrees of separation two kind of infinite loops that are layered. 
you can kind of think of this as like a while loop nested inside of another while loop but it's not even a while loop it's like it's like a while loop and then inside of the while loop you're doing an infinite number of of of, of verifications over an infinite set so i mean it's it this is you know even more not computable than this but it but it's still practical right what you're really saying here is to it's this is really like the set of problems uh which are solvable up to and this is you know solvable is getting really you know stretched in its meaning solvable up to uh, a while loop an infinite while loop an infinite series of verifications over uh, over uh, infinite sets over an infinite set so we need to like we need an infinite like set of like confirmations and we need to do that infinitely many times that's sort of what's going on here and you can kind of see you know and then we can say you know l is in pi 2 you know if and only if and then i can kind of say the same things x and l if and only if for all y1 there exists a y2 such that you know x1 uh, you know y1 y2 x is in j right i mean i just kind of say the same stuff again uh i can say you know pi 3 if and only if l is in pi 3 if and only if x is in l if and only if uh uh uh, uh for all X, uh, y1, uh, there exists a y2 such that for all y3, you know, blah, 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 something computable. What's going on here? Well, I need to do an infinite series of checks. Um, and then for, uh, but the checks that I'm doing, uh, ev for every single one of these infinite checks, I have to do one of these tasks. So it's like three degrees of separation, and you see what's going on here. You see the hierarchy. So this defines, and, and this defines the um, uh, the arithmetic hierarchy. This defines messily. I'm not going to do it in all of its kind of like technical detail. Uh, the arithmetic hierarchy, which is a very strange thing to call this. Why is this arithmetical? Wouldn't you like to know? Uh, we will find out. Uh, this defines the arithmetic hierarchy. And the picture that you kind of draw a lot of the time is you have this delta zero here, that's R. Uh, and then uh, you can go up to these pi classes, go down to these sigma classes, uh, sorry, one. And then if you intersect them again, you get delta two, uh, delta one. And then you kind of go up again, down again, And that's the hierarchy. It goes like that. So again, sorry to interrupt a second time, but I, I just want to, uh, you know, carry that mistake that I corrected earlier over. So th what it should be happening is that I, I forgot that there is a, a smaller class called delta zero, and then the class that I actually defined as R was delta one. And if you cascade that mistake forward, then then you get the kind of all of these delta classes were defined one, wrong. So this is actually delta two. This is delta two three. And, and so forth. So, so delta 2 is the intersection of pi 2 and sigma 2, right? Delta 1 is the intersection of pi 1 and sigma 1, just like, you know, which is probably how it, which is how it should be. So that was a stupid mistake on my part. But basically the difference is between like primitive recursive and recursive, if you've ever heard of that. But I'll mention that at some point later. And I can draw it in the way that I, I drew it before too. It's a little bit more difficult. So uh, here's uh, sigma 1, that's, that's equal to re. Here's, whoops, that's a little much. Here's uh, sigma, uh, pi one, that's equal to co -re. And then here's r. And then uh, now it becomes difficult uh, to do it. I have to do this again. So here's sigma two. And then here's uh, pi two. You might be wondering about this region in the middle, but you and you and you would be justified in doing so. This is delta one, and then you know dot dot dot. So this is kind of a mess to draw. Uh, that's why people just kind of diagram it after a point. Um, but this is called the arithmetic hierarchy. Um, and believe it or not, what we will have uh, by the time we've proven the first incompleteness theorem 
is we will have a decision problem, a real decision problem. Well, we'll talk about how real the decision. No, it's a real decision problem. No, we have a, we'll have a real decision problem that, believe it or not, is not contained in any level of this hierarchy. Um, and moreover, we know that it is a hierarchy. It does not collapse, or at least the first two layers don't. Um, and there's a theorem called Post's theorem, which confirms that it doesn't collapse uh, for any other uh, layer. There, this is, every single one of these is distinct. Uh, so we have this hierarchy of almost like degrees of hardness, like where the easy computations are just the computable ones. Now that's a horrible measure of easiness. There can be some very, very difficult computations that are still doable. Uh, but you can kind of see this as like a measure of difficulty, right? If you're in sigma 5, that is a, that is a much harder problem in some sense than being in a sigma 2 problem, right? So pretty cool. And uh, it will matter, sort of. We're going to find something else. It'll be honestly just like uh, computable enumerability. It'll be sort of the reverse. With computable enumerability, I defined it in the way that made sense first to the name, I mean. Like, you know, did, did the name justice? And then we showed another definition that didn't make any sense considering the name, and we showed they were equivalent, right? That same thing is what's going to happen here. We're going to define the arithmetic hierarchy again later and then realize that it is the same one as the one I just defined here. So that will be towards the end. That'll be towards the finale of all this, but we're getting there. So that is all I want to say about computability theory independently of metamathematics. We're now going to move into doing some actual metamathematics, so look forward to that.